Welcome back to Innovation. This time we are going to create what's called a choose your own adventure game. So to make the game, we have to first make a plan because this game, we can't really figure out how to design it until we figure out what the story is a little bit. So the way a choose your own adventure game works is we have to map out some choices for our characters. So I'm gonna call my character Abby, and we're gonna draw a little circle here, and this represents the start. So our character Abby is going to start somewhere. So where's our character gonna Abby start? Well, to figure that out, you should probably go into Scratch. We're gonna look at Scratch, I'm going to click on create a new project. And <clears throat> what I want to do, <coughs> pardon me, is look at the backdrops that are available to me. So if I scroll through the backdrops, I find one that I kind of think looks interesting for me to start. Oh, a mountain. So I'm going to add this mountain to my project because I know I'm going to be using this mountain. And I'm also going to get rid of the cat. And I'm going to find a character. Oh, look, here's Abby. So I'm going to put Abby right here so I can kind of get a good idea of what's going on. So I'm going to go back to my storyboard. So I'm going to start with Abby. on a mountain. And you'll notice that to her left looks like there's a path and to her right is a cave. So I don't have to write out the whole story right now. What I have to do is keep track of the choices that Abby is going to make. So to make a choice, We draw a diamond. For statements in the program, we draw a rectangle. And then we use arrows to connect them. So we're going to put in a question here. We're going to say left or right. So Abby is going to either choose to go to the left. or she's gonna to choose to go to the right. And that is what we call a decision tree. And we're gonna map out in what's called a flow chart, the entire decision tree for our program. When you're doing a decision tree, you wanna stick with one branch at a time and follow that out a little bit before you go back over to the other branch. So we're gonna start with the left branch. And again, I'm gonna go back to scratch and kind of find a picture or a backdrop that I think works well for me if I go to the left. So let me go back to scratch. And let me see if I can find a good backdrop that works well for the left. This kind of looks cool a castle. So we're going to have Abby, when she goes to the left, see a castle. So she has a choice to go to the castle or to keep going straight. We have another choice box, castle, or straight. Sometimes my diamonds get a little big. So again, we have our two choices. 
Castle. Oops, let me do it. Put it back up here. Castle on this side. And straight on this side. So again, we want to kind of follow one path at a time. So if we have Abby go to the castle, extend my page a little bit, get some more space. I want her to stand in front of a castle door. Because I remember in my backdrops, one of the backdrops was a castle door. So I'm gonna go and look at the backdrops again. And I could see one of the backdrops was a castle door. So that looks pretty good. Now, if she goes straight, I want her to go deeper into the woods. So I want to look to make sure there's a backdrop for that in Scratch. So back to Scratch. Find a backdrop that looks like deeper into the woods. So click on my backdrops. A new one. A look. Jungle. Not quite woods though. Oh, here's some woods. There we go. So now that's what my woods are going to look like. I like that. So she goes deeper into the woods. So now that we've figured out this kind of side of the branch, we could keep going, but let's go up and do some on the other side. Go up and do the right hand side. Remember in our picture, if we go back and look of our Abbey, when she first started, and sometimes this is helpful, click on backdrops. When she first started, she started on the mountain. And it looks like there's a cave in the distance. So I think when we go to the right, she's going to be at the beginning of a cave. See a cave. So if she sees a cave, Hmm. I think she should decide whether or not she should go into the cave. Or maybe she gets scared and she decides to go left instead. So let's put our choice here. Cave or left. We cave this way. Now left, we actually already have an option for. So I'm gonna take my arrow. And if she goes left, she's gonna see a castle, just like she would have had she gone left the first time. So now we have the cave, right? now. When I look at this cave, I kind of think about it being some kind of portal or maybe um, a doorway. And when I think of a doorway, I think something special is going to happen. So I think it, when I get to doing my story and my code, I think she's going to do some kind of time travel. some kind of time travel effect and then she's going to end up somewhere where should she end up well let's go look at our backdrops so first i think i want to find a way for her to do a time travel effect and i think let's see 
Hmm. One of these backdrops should look like a time trap. You know what? I think let's look at space. I like the idea of doing it in space. Oh, a galaxy. How about she time travels through a galaxy? She goes through the portal. We added that backdrop. And then when she gets there, she's going back in time. So how about she goes to the Greek Colosseum? So I think that's a great time travel for her. So she's going to time travel to the Greek Colosseum. Greece. Back in time. So now we have our storyboard. So why don't you take a couple minutes and see if you can create your own storyboard for Abby. What might it look like? What choices might she make? What other choices, if you keep with this diagram, might she make? Next time, we'll go ahead and start coding this. See you next time.